Man, what a great time of praise and worship, amen? Wow. You can't get much better than that, amen? Maybe when we get to heaven, it'll be much better, but right now, this is, this is as good as you get. Man, it is good to see all of you here today. Thank you for being here and for all those that are joining us from our live stream. Man, it's, it's a great day to be in the house of the Lord, amen? Hey, today I'm going to continue on with a series of messages of connecting to serve in 2021. Today what we're going to be looking at is we're looking at connecting to a church. Connecting to a church. That's what God wants us to be doing. Once we have a connection with Him, He wants us to be connected to a church. Amen? It is now time, though, before I get started. Um, we're kindergarten, first and second grade. Do we have someone back there for them? Oh, there they are. All right, I see them now. Kindergarten, first and second grade, you may go ahead and be dismissed. We have somebody in the back there that's going to take you upstairs for Children's Church. Kindergarten, first and second graders, you're, you're free to go if you'd like to go. And they'll be coming back at the end of our service today. Connecting to a church. I want to preface this, though, by giving you a warning. This weekend, man, I have had one of the, one of the best spiritual renewal weekends I've had in a long time. As a matter of fact, my wife and I was attended uh, a thing called the Secret Church uh, this weekend, and, and we uh, were there and listened to David Platt teach for from six o'clock in the evening till twelve o'clock that night that morning. Amen. We had a great time, and boy, we got I got fired up. And then yesterday we got here early in the morning. We had the the men's uh, rewired conference right here in our church. Uh, through the live stream and had a great time there. So I'm telling you, I, I'm fired up. Y'all better be ready. Now, I warned them in the first service. I said they were pretty lucky because there, there was Sunday school that I was butted up against. So I had to let them go at certain time. Hey, folks, you ain't got nothing. <laughs> Amen? You are here. All you got is lunch. And lunch can be served between anywhere between 12 and 2. Amen? So just hang on today, man. I, I do have my watch set. The timer's up back there, but hey, anything could happen. Who knows? Amen. But today I want to talk about connecting to a church, and I want to preach on a text of Scripture that I love every time the Lord opens up an opportunity for me to teach on Acts chapter 2. I love it because it's talking about the beginning of the church. And how the church was formed and the, the attitude, oh, just the attitude of those folks in that first church. Man, I love it and I get excited about it. And so you type, you type put the paddock in that I'm excited about preaching this with the excitement I've had on Friday night and all day Saturday. Whoo, it's revival time, amen? It's revival time. But I want you to take your Bibles and turn to the book of Acts chapter 2. We're going to be starting at verse 41, and we're going to be reading through verse 47. Again, very familiar passages of Scripture that you all have probably heard many, many sermons on. But today what I want to do is I want to look at their attitude compared to our attitude and see the difference that it could make when our focus is where it's supposed to be. Amen? So if you can, would you stand with me in honor of reading God's Word this morning? You at home, please join along with us. Acts chapter 2, starting at verse 41. It says then, those days were those who gladly received his word were baptized. That day, about 3,000 souls were added to them. Wow. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, in the, in the breaking of bread, and in prayers. Then fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. Now all who believed were together and had all things in common, and sold their possessions and goods, and divided them among all as any had, anyone had need. And so continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking of bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And listen again, and the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. Father, in Jesus' name, we come to you and we thank you for this great time of praise and worship that we just experienced. And, and Father, as we continue on now with receiving of your word, I pray that our minds and hearts be open to you. I pray, Father, that this message that I am about to preach is not my message, but a message that you have given me. I pray that the words I'm going to be saying will not be my words, but God, they'll be your words. And then I pray that the response of your people here and those at home 
Father, it would be as you desire for it to be. And it's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. As I said, I love teaching on this because of the attitude. And we know, someone once said, attitude is everything. Your attitude towards something is everything. It, it's, it's very vital to how you approach with your attitude. And the reason is, is because, uh, just like Justin Aldridge said, Justin Aldridge once said, one of the few things that we can always control is our attitude. Now, we, we don't get a lot of control of others, and I think a lot of people think they don't control the attitude, but can I tell you today, my friends, you do control your attitude. And he says that that's one of the few things we, that we can. It's vitally important that we do so. The reason why is because your attitude influences your action. What your attitude towards something is will dictate how you act, how you react, how you respond, or how you initiate. So if you have a bad attitude towards something, I don't care what you do, it's not going to work out. And so Justin Aldridge said that, that it's vital. So in the, here in the church, it's vital that we have the right attitude toward the church. And I want to tell you, my friends, with the experiences I've had over my years of being a pastor and also being a Christian, uh, I, I was in the church for many years before I became a pastor, but one thing that I have found out in the church, there's a whole lot of Christians, listen to me, there's a whole lot of Christians that have a sorry attitude toward the church. As a matter of fact, I even shared with you last week that, there's a, uh, that it bothers me and I hear, well, I am part of the church, the universal, the invisible church, but I just don't want anything to do with a church. Because the attitude toward a church or the church is bad. And, and whenever you go into anything, especially even in the church, and your attitude stinks from the beginning, it's going to be real hard for you to get anything from it. It's going to be real hard for you to give anything to it. So our attitude is so important. And that's why, we went. that's why I love the preaching of the book of Acts chapter 2. Because, man, you see these folks' attitude. Whew. Wouldn't it be amazing to walk into that place every single day? Wouldn't it be great to be around those type of people every single day? And that's what they were doing. We also see that with the attitude, we see that Wayne Dyer once said that if you change your, the way you look at things, the things you look at will change. Because of your perception of it. And so this is what I want to look at today. I'm basically going to look at, at two sections. One is the four things that they had in this church that made this church the way it was. And then I want to look at a couple of things that really, basically, if you will, attitudes that hinder our connection to the church. And we find them here in this text. The first thing I want to look at is they had four things that made that church what it was. Four things. You look in this text, and my friends, I would love to know that, that when we talk about our attitude and our things about First Baptist West or the church, whatever, wherever you may be going, is that, that you had these four things. The first one is we see that they had a focus. I mean, they were focused on what was important. They, they, they came in and they had this attitude of having all things common. Now the question is, how could they come in and have all the same attitude, have a focus? focus and have all things common well it was very simple because the bible tells us in ephesians chapter 4 verses 4 through 6 it says this there is one body one spirit just as you were called in one hope of your calling one lord one faith one baptism one god and father of all who is above all and through all and in you all so that's how the church can have all things common because the, the one thing that is common or needs to be most common in the church is our focus on Jesus, is our focus on his word. And when we have that, because there's not a, a lot of things that we should be focused on in the church. He says there's only one thing. There's only one God, one faith, one, one baptism, one Lord who's in us all, through us all, and working toward us. And, and that should be our focus. And so we look and we see this church, they had all things common because they, all, they really had one thing in common. And that was their faith in Jesus Christ. So when we look at the attitude that they had a, the men, they were focused on Jesus. And that's what they wanted to, that's what their desires were. 
They had all of this in common. And, and then after that, they had a consistency in fellowship. They had a consistency in this fellowship here that they, that they, that they had. The Bible says they went daily together. And what they did was they developed relationships. Now, this is really important in connecting to a church after you've had a connection to God that you then have a connection to the church that we develop a, a relationship with each other, that we spend time together, that we connect together. We, and, and one thing I want you to understand is that, my friends, worship doesn't provide that for us. So in other words, our coming together and building relationships does not really happen in this room. And I've shared with you before, the reason it doesn't is our intention here, our focus here ought not be on each other. You know what our focus is, should be in here? On Him. So then if this is place, and I hear people, uh, I've talked to people before, and they say, well, we just don't know that we, we just don't feel real connected to the church. And I ask myself, okay, well, what, what do you do inside the church? When, when are you here? What do you do at First Baptist West? And I hear them all the time. Well, we come to worship every Sunday. But we still just don't feel connected to the people. And my response to them is, be careful, because this wasn't made for us to connect with each other. As a matter of fact, we get just a few moments with each other, and that's it. But we get a lot of time focused on Him, amen? So that's where our connection is. And, and we need to understand that it's the time that you and I get to spend together that allows us to grow and have this consistency in our fellowship. And now I'm going to put a, a very, a, 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 I guess, a shameless plug here because I I'm, I'm, I want to introduce something to you today that First Baptist West is going to be doing that I believe God has burdened my heart on. I've shared it, and the staff and I have been talking about it. We've been praying about it, and we've been, been, been aiming at it, and, and it's time to, to roll it out to you. And this is the thing called our summer groups, to connect, care, and grow. Now, here's where it's going to get crazy. God has laid upon my heart such a great need for First Baptist West, for you and I to connect together somehow. That what I'm going to do is we are going to put a call out now for what we call the summer connect groups. And what we're going to do is I'm going to do, I'm going to make an announcement here that's going to shock some of y'all. And I even heard, listen, in the first service today when I made this announcement, I heard, oh, no lie. I even called Trevor, said, Trevor, get the ERT guys down here. Block them off, man. I don't want anybody rushing the stage. But I believe that we have such a need for connection that what we're going to do is this summer, starting at the end of May, the first Sunday in June, we're not going to have Sunday night Bible studies here at the church. Okay, y'all were prepared for it. All right. But not only that, we're not going to have Wednesday night Bible studies here at the church. Now, we're going to have children's stuff. We're going to have youth stuff. And we're going to have uh, preschool stuff. We're going to have that Wednesday nights for them. But for the adults, we're not doing it. You know why? We're going to have summer connect groups. And that's going to be a time that I, I'm going to pray. I'm going to ask you to pray that you'd be willing to facilitate or to be a part of one of our summer groups. Now, there's going to be a Wednesday night prayer meeting here. That's going to be one of our summer groups. They're going to get together. They're going to fellowship. They're going to pray. If you want to be a part of that, that's going to be going on. Right, Rusty? We also have some other groups that I've already kind of picked up and picked up the mantra and say, we're going to do this. But folks, I want you to pray about something. I want you to pray about facilitating one of our summer groups. Now, you don't have to plan a Bible study. It's not going to be a deep Bible study. It's, it's going to be a time of connecting, caring, and growing. It's going to be a time for you to be able to know each other in a more intimate way. And I, I believe right here that right now that God has already laid on some of your minds and your hearts that this is a good idea and that you maybe even want to be a part of this or you may even want to facilitate one of this. Now, once it happened, I'm sure you start going, whoa, but now wait a minute, God. I don't think so. I don't think that's what I can do. But I believe that he's already laid on some of your hearts and what I want to do is I want to encourage you to at least pray about this. Now, the reason we're giving up Sunday nights and Wednesday nights for the summer is because I didn't want to say, okay, we're going to do Sunday night Bible studies, we're going to do Wednesday night Bible studies, and I would like you to add another night onto the schedule so that you can do something else as a group. No, we're willing to put those two things over to you. 
as a church to connect, to grow to each other. And I believe it's important is that we connect to one another. And this is why we're going to do it. Now, we're also going to have even an, an opportunity that I'm going to have a meeting in next month for any of you that are interested in it. We're going to have a meeting. I'm going to go over how we're going to do this. And I promise you, it's not going to be difficult. You don't have to be a deep theologian to do this. But you have to have a need to be together. And that, my friend, over the last year, year and a half now, or over a year, that we have really struggled in this area because we've not been able to connect to each other. And there is such a vital need for this. And so we're going to have our summer groups to connect, to care, and to grow. So they had all these things that come. They had a focus. They had a consistency of fellowship. But they also had compassion for others. They were, they, they're, they're held, they were there to help each other in this area, help with their needs. The more we know each other, the closer we feel to each other. And we can even help develop that in each other. The Bible tells us and to let us uh, consider one another in order to stir up love and good works. Hebrews 10, 21 says that's one of the things we do together. Because once we start getting together and we're not just sitting in here and, and praising and, and doing that. Now, not that that's not important because it is vital. But when we begin to connect to each other, we begin to have compassion for each other. You know why we're going to have compassion for each other? Because we'll know each other. We'll know what's going on with each other. Why? Because we're spending time together. And, and we'll know, hey, there's, there's needs in this church. And we say, well, we connect. We kind of walk by each other. We shake hands. And I ask everybody, how you doing? And they all tell me, I'm doing fine. But folks, can I tell you, sometimes when you ask somebody how they're doing quickly in passing, and they say they're doing fine, can I tell you something they don't mean to be, but some of them are lying to you. Do you know what? You've probably had to lie sometimes. When somebody walks up to you and says, hey, how are you doing? Well, I'm doing fine, but inside your, your heart is breaking. Man, you just lost a loved one. You, you've had something going on in your family. You're concerned about your work. You're concerned about your kids. You got sickness over here. You got this going on over here. And we seem to not have compassion for each other because we don't know each other because the only time we see each other is that 35, 40 seconds as we pass each other here in this sanctuary, coming out of worship or coming into worship. But the Bible says that this folks, these folks had compassion. They even went and sold things to give to each other, to make care, to make the needs met. And then it says that we also let us consider one another, that we can stir up love and good works. In other words, that as we get to know each other and as we begin to share with each other, we might just encourage each other to do that. I got a great case in point here. Over the, over the last month, maybe last month and a half, one of our area pastors well, I'll just tell you, it's Mike Teal from Cameron Baptist Church. Mike started texting me on Saturday evening. And his text read just, hey, hope you're doing well. I want you to know I'm praying for you tomorrow and hope it goes well. Preach hard. Now listen, I know Mike probably sent that to a whole lot of other pastors too, but you know what? It had my name on it. I was there. I received it. Now I've been receiving those for... About a month, month and a half, every Saturday evening. Well, something happened yesterday that was pretty cool. About, oh, about 5.30, I was getting ready to go home from the, from the rewired conference we had here, and I was on my way home, and I began to think, oh, man, I'll bet Mike is going to text me later on tonight. And you know what I did once I thought about Mike? You know what I did at that very moment? I prayed for Mike. Lord, I know Mike's going to send me something. He's going to encourage me. So I ask you today, Lord, watch over Mike and thank you for what he's doing. And then you know what else happened? It wasn't, but right after that, I thought, well, wait, you know what, Lord? I pray for all the pastors in our association because I know what it's like to stand up here. I know how difficult it is sometimes. I know how hard it is sometimes to preach the gospel when maybe you're struggling about something. 
So Lord, be with our pastors and give them a boldness, give them a heart for their people, but most of all, give them a heart for you. Now listen, you say, well, what is all that about? Well, that's stirring up because Mike Teal, without even knowing it, stirred me up to begin to pray for Mike. Now listen, when, he got, when I got his text about 8.30 last night, I went, whoa, there's Mike. And I sent him back, hey, brother, I already prayed for you today. He stirred up in me something I should have been doing all along. He stirred up in me to pray for him before he sent me the text that he was praying for me. And then he stirred me up to not only pray for him, but man, I began to pray for our pastors in our association, all of them. Folks, that's how having compassion for each other, it stirs it up. And when you begin to really care about people, guess what? You're going to stir up in someone else that they'll begin to care about somebody. But listen, if you never talk to them, if you never have anything to do with them, then you're not stirring up anything. But they had, oh, my friends, they had a compassion for others. And it all started when we look in this text and we see that they received the reception of God's word and applying it into their lives. This is what causes this focus. This is what causes consistency in fellowship. This is what causes compassion for others. When we begin to happily, readily receive God's word. And then applying it into our lives. Not just listening to it. The Bible tells us that in James 1.22 that we are to be doers of the word. Apply that which we've received. Put it into our minds and into our hearts. And then from there, apply it into our lives. Apply it into our actions. It says become Doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves, thinking that's all right. Well, I went to church today, check. No. Apply it into your life. As a matter of fact, the Bible tells us in Psalm 119, 11, Your word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. So we take that which we've received from his word, we apply it into our lives. And folks, listen to me. When each of you do it here and each of you at home begin to do that, we begin to apply it into our lives, then it will give us a focus. We'll begin to have all things common because our focus is on Jesus. Then when we begin to have a great focus, then we'll have a consistency in fellowship because we're going to want to be together. We're going to want to find times that's beyond the 40 seconds or so that we have together in here together that we're going to look for times and opportunities. And then once we have that consistency, then we're going to have a compassion. We're going to have a compassion for others. Wow. Now who, my friends, who wouldn't want to be a part of a church like that? Who wouldn't want to be? Their attitude was so good, and their attitude was catching. Can I tell you people catch your attitudes? Whether it's good or bad, they catch it. Amen? Our attitudes are contagious, and wouldn't it be good if our attitude was first right with God and then was right with the church, that we were connected to the church, man, wouldn't people want to be a part of a church like that? Hey, that's why, that's why I believe with all of my heart that God was able to add to that church daily those that were being saved because of the great attitude of the people. Can I tell you today that in America's churches, there's not people being added to daily to the church? And can I tell you a big reason why? Attitude. Our attitude stinks sometimes, folks. We'd rather blast the church than lift up the church. We'd rather kick somebody when they're down rather than have compassion for them and lift them up. We'd rather ignore somebody than spend some time with them. When our attitude is the way God would desire for it to be because we're connected to him, then God's going to add to that. God's going to add to that. And it starts with each one of us. Now, I told you, I'm fired up. I'm only halfway through. Man, the clock tells me I only got five minutes and 45 seconds. So hang on. Hang on tight. Keep all arms and legs inside the right at all times and hang on tight because here we go. We've got section number two now. Section number two is I want to look very quickly at three attitudes that I believe hinder the connection for between people in the church. We saw what happened that connects it. 
I want to now look very quickly at what I believe with all my heart. We see the opposite of what takes place in this church, and we apply it into here. But here's a couple things I believe that hinder the connection. First of all, is that we have an attitude of receiving rather than giving. Our attitude is, what do I get? Is it like I want? Are they meeting my needs? Is this church doing what I want? And listen to me. This, I believe, is a major cause of division in the church. Because people are having the attitude of, what can the church do for me? What can they give me? And am I going to get anything out of it? And that's, listen, that's, you, you want to know how common it is? This is the attitude of when we look and we wake up on Sunday morning and maybe I don't feel so good and maybe things haven't quite gone the way I wanted to out the week. Maybe I didn't get the eight and a half, nine hours of sleep that some of y'all need. I don't understand that, but maybe you, need, you didn't get it all. And you wake up and you say, well, there's no need for me going to church today because I'm not going to get anything out of it. You see the attitude? It's not that, hey, I'm going to give something today. So what we're really saying, listen, can I really tell you what we're saying? When I, and I say that sometimes, and I'm the pastor. But I got to come because I get paid to be up here. Y'all get mad at me if I'm not here. But what we're really saying is, I don't have an attitude to give anything today. It's not, oh, well, I'm not going to get anything out of it. Well, that's true, you're not. But what you're really saying is, I don't have an attitude to give anyway. And this is dangerous to the church. Because the problem is, if many of us have that attitude, and you say, say, however many are in this room, and how many are even at home, and you're watching this, and we all have that attitude, guess what? My needs aren't going to be met by any of you, because guess where your thoughts are? Well, your needs to be knit, you need to have your needs met by me, and I'm not meeting them, because I'm, I'm wanting what I want, you what you want, and now our focus is off. Now we have no unity, and nothing good is happening. And folks, that's dangerous to the church. We begin more worried about what we're going to get than what I'm able to give. That attitude will destroy the church. It's what the church can give me, what the church can do for me. But the second attitude is being served rather than serving. I want to be served. And this is part of the church. Listen to me, my friends. The church was never intended to be a spectator sport. You were never meant to come to church and just sit and do nothing. Just to be here, to be a part. No, it is, not a, it is not for the mentality of having to be a spectator. As a, as a matter of fact, Martin Lloyd-Jones said this. Men and women no longer exercise in sport as they used to. Instead, people tend to sit in crowds and just watch other people play. And then he went on to say this. And I fear that the tendency is even presenting itself in the church. That we would love to come and be a part of Acts chapter 2 church. Woo! And I'd love to know that God was adding to our church every day. Woo! And I'd love to know that we were having baptisms every Sunday morning. Woo! Boy, I'd love to sit in my chair and watch that every Sunday. I'd love to be able to anticipate Monday through Saturday going back to church and sitting and watching somebody walk down the aisle, watch the preacher baptize, watch people come. Woo! Folks, that, that's not what added to the church daily. It's never meant to be spectators. As a matter of fact, by what this says, and I'm not going to talk about physically overweight because I'm not going to do that because I convict myself, amen? But I believe with all my heart, my friends, there's a church all over America. The church is spiritually overweight because we are being fed a lot. But we're not exercising that. We're not applying it into our lives. So we come Sunday after Sunday after Sunday after Sunday, and we eat and we eat and we eat and we eat, but then we go on Monday and we do nothing. We watch. We watch this going on. 
But it says this attitude will hinder the connection. As a matter of fact, something I even heard Friday night. David Platt said, to be a Christian, to be a Christian is to live with a radical abandonment for the glory of Jesus. To be a Christian is to live with radical abandonment of myself and my comfort and my, my longings and whatever it is. And it is to give God glory in all that I do, all that I say, everywhere I am. Man, my goal is to, to, to have an attitude of focus on Jesus, to have a, a, a common idea with my church, to, to, to focus on the, and have compassion for the people. I want to radically abandon myself and give everything I am to Jesus Christ. Look back to the book of Acts. Can I tell you something? These folks did not have a whole lot of stuff to go off of. They just knew that Jesus was was alive, that Jesus loved them, that Jesus died on the cross for them, and that Jesus has called them into serving him. That was their attitude. And the last one, and I'm going to wrap up because the time it, it's a full straight zeros back there. I'm just letting you know I'm aware. Is that the, the last part is to have rights rather than responsibilities. I have rights to this church. I have rights to do in this church what I want. I have rights to say about this church what I want. I don't have any responsibility. It's my church, and I should be able to say and do what I want. And when I walk out of here, because it's my church, then I have the right to say what I didn't like about my church. I have a right to pick out everything that went wrong in my church. And a lot of people like to say that, and then what they like to do is they like to say, well, I have a gift of constructive insight. I walk in and automatically God begins to open my eyes to all the things wrong. I have constructive insight and I have a right to get it the way I want it. I have a right to get it the way I like it to be. I have a right to do these things because it's mine and I have rights more than responsibilities. Now, I like to give it another name, this idea of gift of constructive insight. I have another name for it. I call it the gift of cynicism. Amen? Folks, there's a lot of cynical people in the church today that aren't getting it the way they want and they get complaining and moaning and groaning and whining while they're being fed and they sit and do nothing. But I have a gift of insight. I can sure meet with you on Monday and tell you everything I saw wrong on Sunday. What's wrong with having our attitude to one where we see the glory of God being presented in this place. Sure, we probably don't have the best of everything in the world, but I know we got the Spirit of God working in this place. I know we do. And so when we look at this, we look at the book of Acts and we say, yeah! God, I want that. Guess what? The same God, the same Holy Spirit that brought this to these folks here is the same, listen to me, the exact same Holy Spirit that is working right here today. So if he's here and he did it there, And he's here, and he wants to do it here like he did here. And if he's here, and he wants to do what he's doing here, but he's not doing it here, guess who's wrong? It's not the Holy Spirit. Maybe, oh, just maybe, church, maybe our attitude stinks. Maybe we need a new heart. Maybe we need to have God renew stuff in me. Maybe we need to say, God, stir up in me this. Change my attitude. Attitude is everything. And God, I don't want to ever walk back into this place 
already looking for stuff to be wrong. I want to walk back in here. Man, I want to see the glory of God working through First Baptist West. I don't want to walk in here and be amongst a bunch of strangers that I don't even hardly know their names. I want to be a bunch of people that I know everything about them. And man, we're loving each other. We're, we're having compassion for each other. We're not kicking each other when they're down. We're lifting each other up. God, I want that attitude. God, I want to, I want to have that attitude of where I'm giving instead of wanting to receive all the time. And it's not about me anymore. God, I want it to be about you. I want it to be about my brothers in Christ. I want it to be about us reaching lost people. God, what do you want me to do? Where do you want me to be? How much effort do you want me to put into it, God? Rather than why do I have to give so much? Say, God, why can't I give more? Why can't I be connected more? Why can't I love more? Boy. And I promise you, I promise you, not because of Harold Gacy, but I promise you by the Holy Spirit of God, because the Bible says his promises, the one who makes his promises faithful. I promise you that if we have collectively as a church this attitude, I promise you God is going to begin to add daily to the church those which are going to be saved. Okay, let me say that again. I promise you that if we have that attitude, God will add daily to the church, this church, First Baptist West, those who will be saved. Okay, let me say it one more time. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Do you see what I'm saying? It's here. That's what being connected to a church is all about. It's not just to put your name on a roll and say we're there. No. Man, it's to become a part of a body that is given over to Christ. Serving Him. Serving Him what He wants. And then reaching people for Jesus. That. That's what it's about. And I promise you, it's all in our attitude. <laughs> it's all in our attitude. So be careful. Be careful. I'd like you to bow your head as we step into this invitation time. I, 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 want, you, I want you to pray about something real quick. Just very quickly. And then, then we're going to sing a song. And if God's speaking to your heart, man, I want you to respond. Just real quickly. Do you know Jesus as your Savior? Man, I, that's, that's as basic as I can get. Do you know Jesus as your Savior this morning? If you're here today or you're watching and you're not sure that you have Christ in your life, that there's never been a point that you received him, then listen, I'm, I want to tell you, you can't change your attitude about the church. You can't change your attitude about relationships. You can't change it because you, you don't have it. But man, if you come to Jesus as your Lord and Savior today, man, he will change your heart. But secondly, what has your attitude been about connecting to the church? What has your attitude been about the church? Then can I tell you that's what you're going to get? Whatever your attitude is, that's what you're going to get. But today you say, Lord, I want my heart to be focused on you today. And through focusing my, my heart on you, I want to connect with you, God, like I haven't maybe in a long time. But then I want, to, I want to also connect to this church. I want my heart to change. I, I want it to be about others and not me anymore. Not what I like, not what I even think. I'm going to be down front in just a moment. Man, maybe you just need to come and pray. Maybe I'll, I'll come pray with you. you. You at home, man, you call the church. Someone will be listening. Someone will be there to listen to you. But would you come this morning? God, affect my heart today. Affect our church today. Let us see people coming to Jesus because of it. And start with me. Lord, hear our prayers. Hear our prayers. 
In Jesus' name, amen. As you stay seated and listen.